All right, we're back and gonna cover something that I think a lot of people can see because we've gone through a lot of the different management requests um, and a number of modules even past what Chris has. And it seems like at a heart, a lot of, a heart of a lot of this is the service request aspect because service requests seems like get tied in with a lot of different things uh, across all these different processes. So, yeah. uh, so here we go, man, kick it off, let's, let's dig in. Yeah, so first and foremost, you're exactly right, David. The, the service request really becomes the uh, forward-facing aspect of IT to your company. So it represents the service catalog. Uh, it is represented directly within the portal, and that's optimally where we want to send people, is to a portal that they can make the request themselves. We're going to classify it appropriately, hopefully do some automation, really streamline our processes, get it in the system so that it's much better uh, customer service uh, process for the end users. So with that, we have our service catalog. Uh, our service catalog is really made up of two different items. We have service offerings and request offerings. So uh, when we create a service request template, it can be a standalone template or we can apply that template directly to that service offer or the request offering, for instance. So in that case, it becomes really flexible. So if you call up, I answer the phone, and you say, I need a new user, no problem. I can use a new user template that was already published for our mm -hmm. uh, service catalog, and I'm off and running. So in this case, uh, just to talk through, um, we're going to look at the service catalog itself. We're going to look at the request offerings, how we create that template. And more importantly, and this is the tricky part, because uh, it's all very straightforward in the, in the console itself. But we have to publish, and we have to relate these things together to get the proper uh, framework set up for the portal to understand and be able to consume. Um, a lot of that, too, is uh, we have the capability of asking very customized uh, questions in this process, which you know, are, are fantastic for getting to the heart of the issue and getting the information out from the, the end user uh, to either get to the root cause of the issue or hopefully even help automate. So uh, we'll look at that, and we'll look at how that actually fits into the portal, and we'll hop into that uh, uh, briefly after we just talk about kind of what I talked about. We're going to create templates, look at the categories, the requests and, and service offerings, and how that relates into the portal. There we go. Okay. Well, let's dig in. I mean, yeah, I awesome. think people see in, seeing it in action is a lot better than just talking about it. So yeah, let's for sure. See okay. So here we are in Service Manager again. I've got uh, my service request module. I can certainly you know, go through the different views on the left-hand side to see what's out there, what's currently canceled, closed, completed, uh, things of that nature. If I wanted to create a service request, again, I've got my uh, tasks off to the right here. Uh, I can create uh, one from scratch. They pop down a little bit there. Uh, create one from scratch. Here, I'll do this. Um, or create one based on a template. So to take you through the template side, and I think this is the most important side to go because uh, it tends to be the trickiest, um, let's look at our templates themselves. We could start, again, with a new uh, uh, template uh, or uh, duplicating a template like we did a change, or we can create one from scratch. Let's look at creating one from scratch. Uh, we'll say new Windows phone request. Um, so we have our description or our class. And this, because it's a request, this is really a service request that we're doing, mm -hmm. not an incident. We could certainly uh, you know, map incidents to the portal and all the like. We want to support both incident and service requests. But in this uh, case, we're going to look at service requests specifically. And we'll see that it chose the default service request management pack. Oh, I'm not a fan of that. Let's create a new one. That's kind of best practice. Best practice, yeah. Anytime yeah. you're doing something custom to, to have a grouping of management pack, uh, XML file that associates with that. Absolutely. So creating my new management pack, that's done. Let's go ahead and say OK. This will pop open my new form, which here we can uh, start to fill out and define all the base values that we need for this. So. Uh, new new Windows Yeah, <laughs> sometimes typing is the hardest. It's okay. <laughs> Description, we'll leave blank for yeah, right now. That's fine. Uh, urgency, um, we'll definitely put this at a medium because we want to support our uh, Windows Phone requests uh, in a very efficient manner. Windows Phone is a high priority. You Agreed. Need, you need to I get need that Windows Nokia Phone. Lumia 920. The 9 yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's, 
So we'll just choose hardware. Uh, we could choose a support group. For right now, I'm just going to leave that blank. Let's look at our activity series. So activities, uh, just like the other modules, are ba um, it's really based on activities. Um, when we complete the, the series of activities, our service request is finalized. So yep. in this case, I'm going to put in a quick uh, uh, manual activity. Actually, let me scratch that. I want a review activity up front. I'm just going to delete that guy. So it seems like you know across these different things. I mean, the the, the UX seems very similar. Um, oh yeah, So you know, module. it's like every it's very similar uh, to do these different tasks. You just got different categorizations of what you're calling it, whether it's an incident or service request or <laughs> yeah. And obviously, different things come with that, but um, it, it's it's yeah, familiar once, for yeah, folks. Yeah, once know? you get into one module and you kind of perfect that, the others come secondhand. Yeah. Uh, you really understand how the system works and, and what's going on there. So uh, I'm just adding my last activity. So we'll say uh, uh, order and deliver phone. Um, so great. We've got some basic stuff in there. So now this template is going to have those activities uh, associated with it every time. Let's go ahead and save that off and let's build out this portal and, and see how this really works. Mm -hmm. So from here, we're going to go into our service catalog. Um, our service catalog, like I mentioned, is made up of service offerings and uh, request offerings. Um, I already have a service offering that's created. If I pull up my portal, I'll just show you. I've got uh, a nicely customized portal here. Really, the, it's SharePoint based. The options are limitless in what you can do. I like to have a little fun in mind, so uh, you know I use fun icons and cool colors and graphics and things like that. Fruit, fruit or alien device, <laughs> I see that there. I like that. That's, that's, that's fun. That's where we're going to target our new Windows Phone request, because if their <laughs> fruit or alien device has broken, we just want to get rid of it, right? That's right. Just give them a new Windows Phone. Get rid that's of it. That's one way of doing it. Process. You got process. Yeah. We're going to weed this out programmatically. So <laughs> um, at this point, I've got my template created. What I need to do is create my request offering. That's the base component that's going to allow me to, to make this all work. So um, I will click on Published Request Offerings. And let's create a new request offering. So my request offering is um, get rid of that old phone. A little slow. And actually, let's do this. Let's call it the Windows Phone. Yeah. You can put the custom little icons on yeah, there. Yeah, totally. Make so look, look fun. I've got a million icons that uh, uh, I love to use. We'll see which one that is. Oh, that one's all right. That's a Windows one? Yeah, it's a Windows one. It's an there old school go. one. Uh, so we'll put our description in. And now, here's where we select that template that we just created. So the template, uh oh, that's not going to be good. Oh, sweet. So. So we're creating this yep. service offering, and then we're going to add uh, the service template for creating a new phone. Yeah, new Windows Phone associated request. with it. Yep. Absolutely. So notice the management pack on this is grayed out. We saved that template into a management pack before. Mm -hmm. That's where everything is going to be saved to. So let's go ahead and choose next. Here we could add uh, the flair to our form. So form instructions. Uh, please uh, do not try to fix that old phone. Just order a new good one. And we have uh, different types of prompts that we can put below. We'll give this a second to catch so up. If it's, uh, yeah, so if you had a phone yeah. that you said, hey, well, what's wrong with your phone? And you had a series of prompts that they must answer before getting a new one or something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You could so, put that in there. Yeah, I see my form has given me a little bit of a problem. Okay, Let's, we'll just uh, keep going. Yeah. yeah, we'll keep going. I'll open this back up and here then, in a moment. And then user prompts. Yeah, so. so user prompts, really, the prompts that we ask, that's the, uh, uh, the particular questions I want to ask. So what type of Windows phone do you want? What color do you want it to right. be? Who's your carrier? Those types of things. Um, those are all items I want to ask here. So here's our user prompt uh, aspect of the request offering. We give form instructions so the end users know what they're requesting. and how to fill out this form, and then we can ask them very specific detailed questions that will help us fulfill their request. 
here we can say uh, what type of uh, Windows phone would you like? Uh, this can be required. It can be text. It can be uh, any various different types of data. So yeah. in this case, I could say a simple list would be ideal um, so that we really control the, the responses that the users uh, give. Uh, who is your carrier? Um, I can say that's optional, sure. We okay. can leave that as text. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, and uh, what color? So very basic. We've got some options there. Uh, we can now go in and configure the prompts. Here's where we actually uh, build our list. So I can say Nokia 920 and maybe the uh, Nokia 820 are the two options we offer. There you go. I can set one as default if I like uh, my 820, for instance, because yeah. it's a little bit cheaper. Maybe they'll go they, with that. They Great. They could. Yeah, uh, just set click that as default. Go. We've got some basic strings. And just to show you briefly how you can configure these, there's a lot of different options there. So ultimately configurable. Mm -hmm. Now comes the fun part. We can take that information and uh, map that directly back to our form. So uh, we know that uh, I need to. Um, I'll just take and drop these items right here. What type of Windows phone? Actually, um, I'll clear that and I'll choose option two. Who's your carrier? Uh, what color? And down below, we can take that description that we left blank in the template and actually populate that with uh, the particular phone request that the person would want. I can take that same information and on the approval, uh, automatically carry that over into the approval so my boss can see that I want the 920 versus the 820 and make the best decision. And then ultimately to the person who's going to order and deliver this, same thing. So carry that data anywhere throughout the, the entire process, including the associated activities. Yeah. Next, we can apply some knowledge articles here for people if maybe troubleshooting that angry phone or whatnot. Um, and then the publish aspect. So, Right now, we're in draft status. Mm -hmm. We need to be in publish status. And publish allows us to take that and relate that to the service offering and hook it all together. That's the framework that really builds the service offering. So we'll go ahead and take this and say create. So while that's doing that, what we'll do is uh, um, we now need to go into the uh, uh, excuse me, service offering alone and relate that uh, new request in there. So here's our service offerings. Let's go to our published ones. And we've got a nice good list of items in here. And I think that was, uh, let's see, fruit or alien device. There you this go. This is where we're going to hook it into. So again, the same prompts that you saw in the previous form itself. We can go through each of these items and set up what we want there. I don't want that generic incident request anymore. I want to go grab that request offering. So I'm going to sort this by published and order a new Windows phone. So that's our request offering. We're hooking it in directly here. And we see that this is in a published status as well. So we're good to go. If I say OK, the second that changes, we can now go and effectively pull up our uh, portal and view that request and submit the request here itself. That all ties into the SharePoint website and then just publishes that information automatically. Right up there. Yeah, so okay. all those questions that I added in, those mm -hmm. become elements within the form itself. So here's my Fruit or Alien device. Sure. Oh, order a new Windows phone. There okay. We go. That, that sounds like my option. So from here, we're going to launch this request form itself. Hey, there's that Nokia 920. There's the 820. Uh, I like the 920. Red, of course. There. Right? Yeah. And who's my carrier? Um, AT and T. We'll give them uh, a little plug, I guess. So looking at the form itself, very basic, dynamically driven. These are the yep. questions that we need answered so that we can really streamline this process. Uh, I get a nice confirmation page. I submit this in. and. There's our service request, automatically created in Service Manager that uh, quickly. 
We see the uh, status of that within the portal itself. It'll quickly go into a uh, review status and then reach out to my manager and he'll have to go through and, and do all those uh, appropriate reviews. Um, but just to give you a peek inside under the covers of what that looks like in Service Manager so that you see how we interact with the service request fulfillment uh, module. So we'll look at all open service requests. There's my new Windows phone request. I can see that uh, this particular uh, service request is in progress now. So that's a, great, that's a great sign. It's already kicked off. Mm -hmm. We see that there's the review activity. If I wanted to, I could open that up and vote for my manager. You know, mm -hmm. I should probably not skip the, the process. But, yeah. uh, and then afterwards, the, the individual who is assigned to take care of the manual activity of ordering the phone will fulfill that. He'll complete his activity. And it's done. That's it, and the process is taken care of. The process is taken care of. What, um, to give people an idea, what are all of the, the types of um, things that can get automatically bubbled up into the, the web portal? Oh. Like that. I, you know, anything. So that, it's okay. so wide open, but just don't limit yourself. The, the biggest thing is, you know, don't think this is all about you know, uh, uh, the, the things that you focus on daily. There are other, organiz or other units within your organization who could really use this, like facilities management, security. Uh, you know, we do things for customers all the time where they may need a, a conference room set up or, a, you know, a, some type of travel requests. Anything can really be automated through this portal. The ticketing is all very, uh, you know, integrated, and we can... Uh, give views to individuals so that they can work in a, a queue fashion that fits their team and their needs. Right. It's very dynamic and flexible. But from a, when you go back to the console over there yeah. and you look at the main, the main section, mm -hmm. um, the offerings, right? It would be the service and the request offerings primarily that would, would autom when you create one of those, would, would bubble up, um, right? I mean, or is there other areas within uh, so here? Is there other areas within here that you can make when you publish automatically show up inside the... Yeah, so like off to the left here, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, so, well, those are just views, and views can be dynamic or they can be pretty static. So out of the box, they come static. We can configure any view to, you know, if I had a, uh, you know, a, a procurement uh, view for any type of service request, uh, it's very easy to go in and just create a, a view at this point, target that to the group who's going to be working in that, and allow them to work in the fashion that they see fit. So. Uh, all built in, out of the box. You know, not a not a lot of you know crazy customization that you need to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, and customizing the web portal itself, mm -hmm. um, other than within the form, how does that how does that work? Yeah. So obviously, my web portal is very customized. Right. Uh, there's probably not many like this in the world, but yeah. um, you know, it, quite frankly, it's very simple. The the web form itself uses. I mean, it's SharePoint, so we have master pages and CSS. We just have to apply a little bit of CSS and define our images. Okay. And then as far as the interior part of this, uh, it's all Silverlight based, but there are settings uh, files behind the scenes where I can go and tweak the, the size of the fonts, the, the number of questions per page, the, the okay. background. So it, it's ultimately very flexible. Okay, that makes sense. All right, well, I think that is it for us. Great. Uh, thanks for, for helping out and, and giving us all that info on awesome. SCSM. Thank you all, appreciate it. Yeah.